keep us anonymous. This episode is going to be called Power in All of Entertainment. I'm one of your hosts, Penny B, and we have our second host. I'm Kevin Benoit, Parlay Magazine founder, Parlay Endeavors executive director. A lot happening over here. Happy to see y'all. Glad to be back. Yes, yes, yes. Can you believe it's episode five? Listen, we, we running through these things. Consistency, consistency. We're going to keep it going. Right, because um, that's what a hustler, you know, you got to be consistent if you're a hustler. Like First and foremost, anything else is secondary. So Indeed. But yeah, um, I, per usual, kicking it over entertainment news. Um, this week, Apple Music dropped their 100 greatest albums of all time. Oh. Did you get a chance to check out this list? I did. I did get a chance to check out the list, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so for those who didn't have a chance, I got to pull it up. So yeah. Because it's kind of questionable. Like, a lot of people are like, really? Even I, like, certain entries on the list, I was like, really? But yeah, I mean, that's I don't, what we're here to talk about. Right. Like... I don't know why Apple felt the need to do. I mean, this is just the trend, right? Like every year they're doing top albums, top greatest artists of all time. Mm-hmm. It's just to get the people going. Um, so they create their list. I will run it down from ten, because um, it, it's too much to try to debate everything else. But we can do right. It's a hundred. We can't do um, all that. And so it's different genres, right? It's literally every genre of music. So that also you know, complicates things and makes it very complicated. So right. coming in at number 10 was Beyonce's Lemonade. Uh, number nine is Nirvana's Nevermind. Uh, seven, no, eight, sorry, is Amy Winehouse, Back to Black. Seven is album. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City. Six is Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder. Five is Blonde, Frank Ocean. Four, Prince... And the Revolution, Purple Rain. Three, The Beatles, Abbey Road. Two, Michael Jackson, Thriller. One, Lauryn Hill, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. So, um, I mean, we can start there at number one, man. I, yeah. <laughs> I enjoy Lauryn Hill, right? Like, I, Lauryn Hill's cool. Greatest album of all time. Like now, now we doing too much. <laughs> now we doing too much. Like El Boogie. Every time I see her come up in conversations for like greatest female rapper of all time, I'm like, how we? How did we even get here? Right? Like I don't even. <laughs> I've never considered my entire life. I've never considered Lauren Hill a rapper. Right? Mm. Like I understand that. Yes, she can. She can flow. That doesn't make her a rapper. Right? Like. Lauren Hill was a singer. Everything is everything is is a great song because she's singing on. Like, right. What's a great? What? Give me a hot sixteen from Lauren. Like it don't exist. So I just don't. Ah, uh, I can't say that. Man, we're gonna be saying. I think that Lost to... Ones. I think that I think the whole. I think the entire song Lost Ones. I think that right there is like her tribute to rap. I think people like. Attribute that song, some of the Fuji stuff. I think they attribute to like the rapping. Right. Um, like, I, I feel like she does. She does it. It's not even fair to say she does it like Missy, because Missy is a rapper, right? Right. Miss, right. Missy rapped, but Missy could hit you with the R and B, right? Like a melody. Missy, <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she was the 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 greatest R, but it, I, I look at the same way with Lauren. Like, yes, you are a great singer who can flow you you've been around rappers your whole life you were in a rap group right yeah. so yes you were you the singer in that rap group but you were still in the rap group so you you have that in you she from jersey like I, and this is i'm not trying to shade or anything but i think we just gotta be realistic like you have one project that's a great project i'm not taking away from the project but to sit here and act like it is better than michael jackson's thriller <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's the greatest yeah. female rap album of all time. Would I even say that? Like, I don't even, I can't even say that. You know what? I'm not even a big Lauryn Hill fan. 
because you know I've bought tickets to see her, and of course she sometimes didn't show up. Sometimes, it's like, so I'm not a huge Lauren Hill fan for that regard. Um, also, I mean, when you just look at if we talk about greats and legends, and you just look at you know the catalog, she doesn't have the catalog. So <laughs> I mean, clearly, but I could agree that she probably has the best album of female rap. I could say or female. If we want to put her in rap, because I think where you're making the divide at is like she's not a rapper. I think you're making that divide. Yeah. But I don't think that I think that she was so eclectic. And I think that she stood for hip hop at the time that that's why she gets thrown in that category as well. And if we gonna put her in the female rap category, I can say that that is probably the best female rap album. Now, not best rap album of all. I mean, not best album of all time. But I think that um, the thing, that album was a work of art. And I think, you know, it's one of those pieces that it kind of transcends creeds. People of all different, um, another thing too, people of all different like um, generations. Like that album is, it just speaks to your soul. Like, so I can, I see why we would say female rap, but I don't agree that it's better than Thriller. <laughs> like, it, I don't even think it's better than Michael Jackson's first album. So, you know, yeah. I, I can't even say it's the best female rap. Even if I were to put it in the rap category, if you, I, I can name Lil' Kim albums that's better. I can name Missy albums that's better. I'm pretty sure I can name The Brat, Funkified is, is probably better. No. I feel like... <laughs> I'm I'm so serious. I feel like her album is no. the most heralded, right? Like it it got notoriety, it got all the Grammys, it was huge for the moment. But I mm. I honestly think it gets I think it's one of the most overrated albums in It's not overrated. And like, here's the thing. I think Lauren Hill is an overrated artist. I agree. Like, I think she's overrated. I think that she's old. I think her. I think because she doesn't have a full catalog, but that album is not overrated. That album is a masterpiece. I feel like the reason why that album is a masterpiece is because you have the instruments, you have the you have the beats, you have the melodies, you have even some of the um, features that she did. Like I used to love him. Like that song behind Mary. Like it's just that could never be overrated to me. That could never be over. Like. Yes, her as a person, she's if definitely we, overrated. If, we talk, if we're talking your now greatest album of all time, then it's definitely overrated. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, if we're saying that this is now better than anything any other woman has dropped, it's definitely overrated. Like, it does it compare heavily? I could put Missy's debut album and her her album, which is still her debut album, put those two albums together, <laughs> and it's the same album. Right, like mm. they, she got more notoriety for it, right? Like she got the awards, the Grammys, right? So people paid more attention. But Missy gave you socket to me. She gave you classics on that album, right? It's, Different it's years. So did, every song on Lauryn Hill's album is a classic. To say that it's her only album, every so song is a classic. Every, <laughs> okay, listen, listen to the album again. From the start, outside of the in, outside of the intros and the little outros that she got, because she does have a lot of that on it. Um, starting from Lost Ones, because that's number two. That album is that. like people. Have, you know what it is? People testify that that album changed their lives. Like it's sort of like th that's the thing about it. Like it's the impact because yeah, Missy is dope, and I feel like. You know, because we don't have Missy producing heavily anymore, I feel like that's why R and B isn't really in a position that you know it it really it, it should be. Um, so you know, all power to Missy. I love Missy, but I feel like with Lauren Hill, that album was transformative for a lot of people. Like that's the thing about it. Like it it wasn't. It's not just about everybody who makes a good album or a hit album or a hit song. That doesn't mean that your music is transformative. And that is an experience. That's not just a feel good thing. Like that album by Lauryn Hill isn't just, oh, it makes me feel good. It's transformative. Like if you really get into it, 
it, you have to listen to it again. Like <laughs> you have to, you haven't listened to it in a long time. No, I've, probably. I've, I've actually listened to it more recently than a lot of these other albums on the list, to be honest. Okay. Um, I I think what happens a lot of times too, and, and you know, this is just how music is. Beyonce's Lemonade, that album, they are not necessarily album for men. So I think that's another thing that that's has true. factored in. I, I understand that as well, right? Like this isn't an album for me. Like I can't really bump X Factor in the hood it, it, or just bump like what day am I just saying here? Like let me let me throw on Zion because that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> You're annoying. You know, <laughs> marching, marching, march. Like when I'm gonna throw. Like, I can't stand so that's you. A, that's me, right? Like everything is th- those songs. Like honestly, that even when the album came out, I was like, uh, this is cool, but this ain't the Fuji's. Like this ain't it. I mean, I'm just being serious. Like the way the way Alicia Keys songs in the minor, like the way that album connects to like I can I keep on fall. Like that's that is a that's good, a hit. That's a good that's, album. That's a hit any day I wake up. Like that I can play that. But I, that that is a good album. I mean, that's good music. Like I feel you know what, what it is too. I feel like you know, a lot of what's being pushed out now is not really music. So I feel like it's just an appreciation for somebody like Lauren Hill for mm-hmm. an album that was transformative. I do agree that it's not a men's album. Same thing with Lemonade. You know, it's not a men's album. Um, but let me ask you this. So what what album do you feel has been transformative for black men? Name Name three. Like, for you specifically, but for, for other black men, you know. I mean, I think I think most black men will say that Jay Z's Blueprint is that album. Okay. And I, I'm 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 gonna say this now. It doesn't really do it for me, right? Like, <laughs> so I already know is? a bunch of people already done turned me off. Like, not nah, can't trust <laughs> his takes on anything. Yeah, and I get that. Blueprint has some hits for me, but then it also had. I love girls, girls. That was whack to me, right? Girls, like, I do adore you. Like, really? That was whack? That was whack. To you? Wow. The joint with, with Pharrell. That was whack. Like, again, I, I I understand what it meant to that era, what it meant to that time, but that's not even... So for maybe, you... Maybe that's my third favorite J album. If, actually, it's my fourth, if I'm being honest. So for you, what albums by you know by other black artists were transformative for you? Transformative for me, um, I'm gonna say, and that's the thing. I, I I always artists that did it for me, I know aren't necessarily everybody else's cup of tea, but I feel like when I think about Fuji's and I think of artists you know, debut album and the impact. I think Wyclef's The Carnival was that album. The Carnival should have gotten the love that Lauren's album got, and it did. Mm. Right? For me, it's always going to be Life After Death. I I personally like Life After Death more than I like um, Biggie's debut. Um, Ray to Die is an amazing album too, but Life After Death, that double disc, he changed music in a lot of ways for me. Um, and just the way I looked at music. Um, th- those are two of my biggest, honestly. And honestly, like I said, if I'm if I'm giving credit to you change sounds, then I gotta give Missy's first two albums that credence. Because what her and Timberland created on those two projects, people were emulating that for years to come. Mm -hmm. And the amount of features she had on those, just her first two, three projects, she had everybody from Cash Money and Hot Boys jumping on that. She had Outkast. Big Boy was on that joint. Like Mm -hmm. She literally, she introduced you, or not introduced, because the female artists were already around, but she had them all on projects. So 
those those are the the just some of the the ones that really influenced culture and, and shifted um, dynamics. And I, I think they kind of hold way more credence to me than some of our albums that we give this this level of attention to. I think what's happened with music is really women support these things more than men do, right? Like women are the ones at concerts, right? Women are the ones who are actually um, heralding it. And honestly, they're the ones making a lot of these lists, right? Like I understand a lot of times it's men you see in the forefront, but it's women that are doing the votes, right? Like I, I work in the industry and there are more women behind the scenes than men, right? There right. are more women running this show than men. It might be a dude all at the top, but there are women throughout the whole process. So when an album like Alicia Keys, when Beyonce drops, when Lauren drops, they are the people who move those projects. It's always interesting when someone like Missy doesn't get that love, but we we know what a lot of that was at that time. And, and, and you know, she's, she's fought through and pivoted through a lot of that, but her and Queen and MC Light, like they, they really created some things that should have stood the test of time. As far as the list and, and to, to kind of wrap up the list, I always say I can't really talk about greatest albums of all time in that sense. Like I listen to black music, right? <laughs> I only listen to black music. That's always been my thing. I might throw it a Adele album on from time to time. I'm, a little Maroon Five. <laughs> Actually, I own a few Maroon Five albums because I still I still have CDs. That's that's actually why I listen to the Lauryn Hill album every year. I listen to all my CDs, so I did listen to Lauryn Hill's album not too long ago. I got some Maroon Fives in there. I got a Jessica Simpson album or two. I got a couple of Pink. You know, I love Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran's my guy. I love Lucas Graham, things like that. But realistically, I don't listen. To, I haven't listened to one Taylor Swift album. Honestly, I don't even think I've listened to a Taylor Swift song. So right. whenever we talk about like, oh, it, Beyonce should win album of the year, I don't know. I haven't listened to a Billie Eilish album. I can't compare, right? I don't, I don't know what. I'm, I'm trying to think of um, the white dude that won album of the year a couple of years ago, popular dude, but I, I can't remember his name because I don't listen to him. So yeah. I can't, I can't really. Macklemore, remember Macklemore? <laughs> so I mean, we're not gonna have this conversation today, but I, I. I'll drop a quick hot take. Macklemore deserved that album of that rap album of the year over Kendrick Lamar. I'll say that over and over again because that was a great rap album. We got that Never conversation. Never listen to Macklemore. Don't honestly. So I can't. I can't either. You know. I can't. Yeah. I, I listened to that album and a couple of other albums from him. I mean, I always listen to Kendrick first, but. When you, when you, if it's a great project, it's a great project. I got to admit yeah. that. I think a lot of times when we have these conversations, like we won't even acknowledge that we don't listen to certain things. How am I going to compare the two if I don't, if I don't listen, listen to them? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So first you got to sit down and listen to the project with an open lens. And if you do that and you still feel like your guy is the better guy, that's fine. But don't, well, don't I see. wonder how how much being that Apple produced this. I wonder how much streams and sales kind of factor, especially from Apple. Like, are people constantly listening to Miseducation of Lauryn Hill on Apple Music? Like, I wonder what what was their quantifying factor? Because I'm sure they had a whole criteria of different things. But what was really the quantifier as far as the numbers and where does that come from? Because that may have something to do with it. I don't know, but I, I would think so. Like we got to have some type of data, <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, I can quickly tell you what their criteria was because Ebro did post it. I guess he was on the panel. Um, albums that represented a cultural moment for the artist or genre. Albums that were complete thoughts, not just a collection of hit songs. Albums that thoroughly represent culture and production and lyrics. Albums that inspire the generation to want to create more music. Albums that represent the best in storytelling music, music, sorry, musicianship, recording and production. Albums that are timeless and reach far beyond the genre category. category wow. I'm category. Wow. Categorization. 
I, I swear I write <laughs> like <I'm really laughs> categorization. Um, so yes, I can see why um, they have Lauren in, in let's say the top ten. But in in all honesty, if I'm going to the album that I think represents those things to me, and I don't know where it fell on the list, I guess I should check while we continue this conversation. Is Outcast Stanconia. Right, like if there, first of all, that's I want to say that's the last black album to get album of the year. But I no, don't think no, from a from a bl last black album from an artist that's not deceased. Ray Charles did get it a few years ago. Um, but I, you know what I, I think the when you was reading it, I understand exactly why Lauren Hill was number one. There was one um, tenant that you read that said the album that inspires others, other generations to make music. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like she, if you listen to a, like a lot of artists, they credit Lauryn Hill for why, and not just women, but they credit Lauryn Hill for why they create, why they're creating music. And they credit that album because that's all they can credit because that's all she has. <laughs> so musicians as well, not just the artists, not just, you know, but musicians, people who play, play instruments, people who are into instruments, people who um, all around the world, I, I can see it. Like based on everything you just read, I can definitely see why people will vote for that album because it was transformative. Like, you know, transformative for the artist, transformative for the consumer. Um, and you know what? I do think that in some ways the Lauren Hill album was transformative for men in some ways too. I mean, I, I can't quote that I'm not a man, but I think that, you know, it was the cultural influence. I think also at a time that it came out, people were more um conscious in terms of the things that they liked, in terms of the content that they wanted to hear. Like you had to be talking about something, and you know you couldn't you couldn't pass with the sexy red behavior. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you couldn't pass with that. Like you had to be talking about something, especially if you was a woman. So yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think oh. this is sort of like I think ultimately because all of this is just opinion based. Everybody has their artists that they like, et cetera, et cetera. So cool. Um, they try to condense it with a, a, a list of quantifiers, and that's fine. But I think ultimately this. We get into semantics when we want to talk about who's a legend and who's not. Mm -hmm. Because I think that ultimately this is what it boils down to. Like, are you making these lists? How can you be considered a legend? Are you a legend? Are you a pioneer? Are you like what? And hip hop just turned 50. So I think that like these conversations are even more relevant because who are we defining as a legend? And what are we defining what are we looking at to even define them as a legend? You know, I think, um, you know, at the Nipsey died, people was running around talking about some Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle was a legend. And it's laughable to me <laughs> because um, this is no disrespect. Blue, my favorite color. No disrespect <laughs> to none of y'all and Cali. I am not affiliated. But that music that Nipsey Hussle makes, trash. I don't care. Like it, it, it don't do it. Like that shit is not even hot for West Coast shit. Like you know, West Coast have like a, a particular sound, and you know, certain certain West Coast shit you can be like, oh, that's fire for some West Coast shit. But Nipsey is not even to me. He's not even fire on some West Coast shit. So to call him a legend because his life was cut short, I think is you know not a fair assessment. <laughs> That's my nice way of saying that's some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I'm not going to go as far as you. I, I don't, I'm not going to call it whack music. I actually love um, that Marathon album. I But I agree he's not a legend, right? Like, I do love that album. We actually interviewed Nipsey when he was first coming out early in his career, like 2010, probably even before that, honestly, way before that. Um so we got to see a lot of it, but like those early mixtapes didn't really move the needle, right? And even that album, you know, that last album, or which was really his debut album, because um, mm -hmm. it was his first official album, that didn't get any attention until after he passed. That album was out for almost a full year before he passed, and it wasn't getting no attention. 
And then he passed and all of a sudden it became, you know, this big project. Um, and that we know that happens when people pass it. It happens right. really almost all the time. But I, I, I'm i sure a lot of why he gets called a legend is because of his community stuff and, and you know, his relationship with Lauren London, all those things help. His him relationship with Lauren London makes him a legend. <laughs> all those things. I mean, it is what it is. All those things added to hit, added to the making legend. him a legend. Like I'm telling you, it added to rela- the hold on. His relationship with Lauren London adds yeah. on to him being a legend. Correct. See, this is crazy. To Again, me. <laughs> I'm not. And this is not me calling him a legend, but I'm I'm just explaining how he got to this point, right? He was they were doing whole covers together. It was on the Essence cover with him and on him and her on the horse in the middle of Compton, like or L.A. wherever they was at. Like it was all part of his mystique, right? It all added to it. Same. That's just good PR to call the, somebody a legend the because they got a spread in Essence. And 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 they fucking with a, a, a actress. Mm. See, the bar is so low. <laughs> like the bar is so low. You know, I, I that's, feel- just, that's a testament to a lot of these things though. Like we all these are like you said before, it's all opinion based, right? Like we're all creating these opinions and you get enough people to say it, all of a sudden it's true. Right. So but the you, thing is, what is your opinion rooted in? And I think that that's the ultimate, like, because my thing is, yeah, we have opinions, like we have theories, but what is it rooted in? Like, what are you using to back that up? Because we can all say anything, but what are you really using to back that up? You know, um, and I kind of just feel like, like, for instance, I feel like people say that Biggie is a legend. And now I'm from Brooklyn and Biggie is not in my top five. And I mean, I am a little on the younger side. I'm not going to tell my age, <laughs> but he's not in my top five. So they know. Huh? Oh. <laughs> um, so, so who's in your you, top five? Because I'm not, I'm not going to say and debate you on, on Biggie being a legend, but who's in your top five? I think that, so I to me, Biggie is a pioneer. And no, he's not as old as the pioneers like Rakim and like the real pioneers. But I feel like because hip hop is 50 and because his contributions, like the cultural impact that it, it has had on other um, artists, I feel like that makes him a pioneer. Um, he could be thrown in the legend, but he ain't in my top five. And that's just that. And the reason why is because he don't have the catalog. Like, I don't care that you came out with two fire albums that is groove music because... Anything that Biggie, you know, it come on in the club or you out like, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, so I'm a groove. I'm going to get my two-step on. I'm a, Especially if I'm in a spot where it ain't New Yorkers. I'm going to show out. I mean, come on. <laughs> but other than that, I feel like, you know, he don't have the catalog. So we're going to run down my top five. Jay, of course. Nas, of course. And see, the thing with Nas, this is why Nas could never not be in nobody's top five. Because he is still relevant today. He just won his first Grammy most recently, like during the pandemic. So he's getting better. Like that's the, and that's what it's about. Like, yeah, he came out with, you know, some of his best, some of his great stuff before, but he's, he's still in the lab. He's still working. So Nas, Jay, Lil Wayne, I don't even got to speak on that. (laughs) Like, I don't got to speak on that, but Wayne is that guy. Um, Yay. I don't have to speak on that either. He's that guy. And Busta Rhymes. I have to speak on that because people, <laughs> I have to speak on Busta. <laughs> I have to speak on Busta. Catalog. Catalog. That's one thing. The catalog. Another thing. The impact. And also, he comes from the era of around pioneers too. So I feel like coming from Tribe Called Quest, like coming from that era and then being able to be solo, then being able to, you know, kind of just um, do everything that he's been doing, I really just, yeah, Busta, that guy. Like, <laughs> I feel like anytime Busta came out with anything, I grew up on Busta, so anytime he came out with anything, it slaps. Like, it just slaps. It's the beats, it's the creativity. He deserves to be in top 10 for a lot of people. Some people may say top 20. 
But he's in my top five because of where I when I grew up. And yeah, he's in my top five. It's it's hard hearing Busted in your top, but then not Biggie. Because Busted The catalog. The catalog. That's I, the justification. I get it. I get it. That's the only that's the only justification. Well, the catalog. The like at the end of the day, like you can't beat Pablo if your work ain't selling. <laughs> like Nikki said it about Remy. Like you can't, like, you can't be the top, like, if your work ain't selling and you only you don't have much work. Like, okay, we know what here's the thing. We can say that he has some of the best rap albums. I could give him that. I could give I could say that he has some of the best hip hop rap albums. I could definitely say that. But I can't say that. He he doesn't. All I can say is he does not deserve a spot in my top five, and I'm gonna leave it at that. But who am I? I'm just Penny B. <laughs> so, and I and that's why I always say that because I just need y'all to know: don't be coming for me. <laughs> don't be coming for me. <laughs> like, I'm good. Oh yeah. I mean, I think my my top five is always. Like I guess we talked about some of my likes earlier. My top five: Biggie. Biggie is my number one. There really isn't an artist. I feel like that has transcended him, even with their longevity, right? And I know that's a crazy thing to say, but has it transcended him? How? Like in what? Like what do you mean? The fact that doesn't matter where you at, you put on a Biggie record right now, and it still slaps, and it's been almost thirty years, tells me everything I need to know, right? But it's other artists you could do that too, like yeah, it, Pop, it, it, it's other art. Like what do we? Pac don't, Pac don't hit like that. Like I'm, what we talking about, dead mama? <laughs> like what we talking nah, about? Nah, you dragging it though. No. What we talking about? Cause Pac, don't, like, and I understand Pac gets a lot of love. I'm not taking away his love. Pac has outsold Biggie. I get that too. But you can't just turn Pac on anywhere and it's going not. Like he don't really got the records that that move the needle the way a big record move the needle. Don't matter where I'm at. Been all over the country, have been outside the country. You turn on Big's rackets. Literally, you could just play the best of Big. You're gonna have everyone sing along the entire time. Right? I feel like DMX got that effect too. DMX, if we talk not, like even, DMX not even top 20 conversations. Like, let's be real. You got you got him in your top 20. You got X in your top my 20. Top 10. Are you crazy? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the other thing. Your top sounds very New York skewed. Um, I mean, I'm from New York. One, I get that. So hip hop is from New York. I get that. I'm not. I'm not taking any of that away. But it, you it becomes, from New York? Well, oh, you switching sides today? I'm yeah, not. Not at all. You know, I'm in New York. So <laughs> uh -uh, yeah. You one of those. You one of those. <laughs> New York so but I, I also think we don't. We don't give enough credence. So when I start getting into my top twenty and my top fifty, like. I have to represent the entire culture. So there's a lot of artists, Ludacris, T.I., Nelly, like those is top 10 dudes. So if I'm going to have them in Nelly my is top 10? The no. The only <laughs> okay. in the unit is M what? producing us. There is not, in all honesty, Nelly might be top three disrespected artists of our, our whole lifetime. Nelly is the first hip hop artist to go number one back to back weeks with two different albums. Like we gotta get that man credit. First three albums, if they not diamond, they close. Like dude was out selling everybody. When Jay said the only dudes moving units was M Pimp Juice and us, it was literally Jay-Z, Nelly and Eminem was the only ones moving records like that for real, for real. So there's no way I can sit here and honestly say DMX or even Buster past Nelly. Like that that ain't but then, but then I feel like you're just basing it on stats. And that's cool. That's a quantifier. It's not just stats. Like it's stats, but again, we talk about cultural impact. When he came in the game. Culture. That's why I wouldn't give that to Nelly because I okay, if if he was selling like that, yes, that to me that's that's those are stats. But I, I can't say cultural impact for Nelly. Nelly's part of the reason why the South was able to really start winning. And I know he's from the Midwest, 
But realistically, when Nelly came in, he opened that door because Nelly was also doing so much music with the folks in Atlanta. He was doing so much music with the folks in Houston. So again, like to not acknowledge that he came in and really create this whole new wave. Because honestly, if he was from New York and he came out, Hatch, that joint came on. Like when you heard Down Down Baby, you didn't know, you didn't, honestly, we didn't even know where St. Louis was on the map. That's true. We thought that was down south somewhere. Like it, it wasn't until I was much older I realized, like, and he would say Midwest Swing and all that. Like it's still, what are you talking about, fam? You in the south somewhere. Right, mm-hmm. but yes, that elevated, and that's how Ludacris was able to really eat. That's how, um, even when we talk about like three six mafia, like they were around, but they weren't around, around like it wasn't until dudes like Nelly. Nelly was the first dude that was in random movies, right? Like, so when we nah, we gotta put some respect on, on that, <laughs> like, don't, don't play with Nelly. but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm also. <laughs> I'm well, thanks hip-hop. for educating me about Nelly. Shit, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. I, I I'm a hip hop historian, right? So, like, I'm, I've cited just about every person I talk about. Like, we've interviewed. Like, I, I can tell you, I can tell you so much about someone like Nelly, so much about someone like Louis Chris, right? Because I was, I was there. Ti, when Ti first got signed to Atlantic, like, I'm second I'm, album. I'm, I'm interviewing. Him. I'm interviewing him, right? So, Trick Daddy, like those dudes, I. Them met them all, talked to them all, had real conversations. So for me, hip hop is it. I mean, obviously, it all, like I said, it's still gonna be Biggie, right? Like, Biggie's my number one. Okay, you didn't get to your top five. So, f- I really finish did, that. the rest don't even be mattering because it's big. Okay, so um, Biggie, but, yeah, Nelly, <laughs> Nelly's still not my top five. Shout out to Nell, but he's not my top five. Hard to um, believe. <laughs> I got, I got, um. I got big. I got Jay. Um, everybody be quick to throw Nas there. Maybe Nas is my number five. I'll put him. I'll put him in there. Um, you said Biggie, Jay, Nas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, those other two spots get tricky because then it becomes people that I'm more so emotionally connected with, and, and like who. Yeah, and I, I always switch up the the people in the middle, but for today it's gonna be Ja Rule, <laughs> um, and it's going to be for today. For today, you gotta be, for you today. gotta stay consistent because it, it changes because the the music changes. So I'm going, I'm, I'm gonna put Wayne in there. I'll put Wayne in there. It could have been T.I. easily, but I'll put Wayne in it. It sounds like you have to force to put Wayne in. Don't force nobody in your top no, I'm, five. I'm not forcing him. Um, I, I mess with Wayne Heavy, but again, like, I think that's the thing. Like, even with Big, right? Like, if we being honest, you give anybody enough time, they're going to fall off, right? Like, they're not going to be as consistent as they used to be. You know, even even with Wayne, like, the height of the Wayne run, Carter 2, Carter 3, like, we talking about 15 years ago. Right, there's been a lot of projects since. Have they moved the needle the same way? Not even close. That's true. You know what I'm saying that's, that's what happens with a lot of these legends too. Like that's how we forget about them. That's my. That's always my thing. I don't want to forget. Let's not forget legends just because the the regular usual fall off comes. Right, like with someone like LL, like he needs to be in these conversations. He for gave sure. that for work. Sure. Right, no, for but sure. He gets. But forgotten. see, he to me, he's a legend. He is. LL is a legend. I feel like he's one of those people that... So, honestly, I had this conversation with my mom and I remember two people that were in her top five. She's a different generation. Come from when hip-hop started. And she said LL and she said Grand (laughs) Poopa. And I'm like, it makes sense for your time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like people like LL, though, don't necessarily have to be in somebody's top five if they're not of that generation because he's a legend. And 
he can also be somewhat a part of that pioneer conversation as well, too. Like he, I feel like he's put in so much work. He he also got the catalog. That's another thing, too. So it's like he's undeniable. Like I feel like it's certain people that's undeniable that like putting him in your top five wouldn't even be justice. Unless you from that era, because then it should make sense. Like you get what I'm saying. Then it's like yeah. you wasn't bumping LL. Who was like if you ask Jay Z who's in who was in his top five, he should say LL. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of just like I just feel like you know when it comes to the top five, it's certain people that is just legendary. They don't even have to be in it. Yeah. And then it's certain people yeah. that you do you can't forget about. And that's the reason why. I always throw Buster in it. And it's not even throwing him in there. Your top five, you are going to have an emotional connection to them based on, you know, just how you grew up, et cetera. So that's another reason why he's in my top five, Buster. But also because, like you said, people try to forget or people don't, you know, because they had their fall off or because, you know, they they did their time. Like, they they in retirement. Like, Buster's in retirement. Like, he put that work in. He did his 20, whatever years he did. And now he's sitting back and, you know, it is what it is. So... Yeah. We also don't give a lot of these artists credit for what they did prior to you still got families, right? And you know, you even with someone like Nelly, someone like Ludacris, like people like, oh, they fell off. They didn't fall off. If you actually look at it, like people in their family passed away and like they had to take a step back. You can't be on the road, you can't be recording albums when you got real life to deal with. Right, you got kids growing up. Yeah, so we we often don't look at that. Like someone like Hove, yes, you were able to do it for all these years, but you you finished your career before you even started the family thing. That's a totally different dynamic. That's right? a totally different dynamic. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I think it's not only just the family thing. I think it's also if you like when you look at somebody like Ludacris, like he's pivoted in a different way. You know what I mean? Um, so you can't call that. He had to, though. He had to, because yeah. it, it was the same thing with Luda. Luda, Luda had some family stuff, and he stepped away. That's the problem with hip hop. You take three, four years off, it's over. That comeback is not going to be the same. Because first of all, the label you at isn't going to treat you the same. Because a lot mm-hmm. of this is still record labels, right? Like you take three years off, they have to fill your spot. Right. Like it's that simple. You know, yeah. even the current state. I think, state of, I think of Luda. I think Luda did did the best thing he could have done because that movie money is a whole different, you know, it's a whole different lane. So I'm definitely happy for him. You know, as a little, as a young girl, uh, Ludacris was my favorite rapper. Um, he had, uh, well, he still has a foundation and I was in fifth grade and we went to the Bronx to help him give out toys. So I remember like, you know, Luda, like he was my favorite rapper because I was young, you know, I was young. And I was listening to stuff I was not supposed to be listening listening to at that time. And um, yeah, so shout out to Luda. Shout out to Luda. How low can you go? How low can you go? Listen, legend. legend. I miss Luda, the fun music. And I mean, that's the thing. I always I always hope that these artists come out and put out a project, but I think it's it's it starts to become what are the fans gonna think? You know, are they still going to love me the same way they used to love me? And I think that's the unfortunate thing with hip hop. So many of these legends that we talk about, they end up just doing tours the rest of their career because, yeah, you still want to hear how low you still want to hear, you know, back that whatever. Like you still want that from 20, 30 years ago, which is perfectly fine. And honestly, you the ones that got the money to go on tour anyway. Right. I can't really try to please these young kids with new music mm-hmm. because they just don't, they don't really care for me. I'm not the name. And, name. I, and I agree. I don't feel like that should be your agenda. Like, I don't feel like, you know, like um, recently um, Buster had got on a song with Coyle Ray. Why? <laughs> like, why? He got on a song with Bia. Why? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just like, this is like why? So yeah, I I don't feel like you know some people they did they work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody can't come back and drop some fire that is going like you know that's going to hit. So you're supposed to enjoy your run, and I feel like some of these people did. And um, just let us love you in your memory. That's what I was saying. Like even if you're still here, let us love 
let us because you don't the thing is you can reinvent yourself but it doesn't have to be in music you know what i mean yeah I, like don't, honestly, don't just be a brand now <laughs> i don't i don't even agree with that honestly i think i think the opposite i think listen you're an artist put it out if people don't mess with it, the, the, they're not going to mess with it the way they did in the 90s. Let's be honest, right? Like, listen, Jay-Z come out with an album today. It's not going to move the same way it moved in 96, right? 97, 98, 99, right? Some of the but, fans is dead, too. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality, right? Like, even, and same with, like, a Lil Wayne, right? Like, the, the people that was around for Carter One is not the same people that's going to be purchasing it today. But that don't mean not to drop it. So I actually am happy when a Buster drops the album. Ghostface just dropped the album a, a few weeks ago, maybe like two weeks ago. Ja Rule just dropped a new song. Like, drop it. Don't be scared to drop it. Put it out. Ja Rule dropped a new song. He dropped a new song on Mother's Day. Um, and it's another hit. I don't, I can't think of too many songs Ja dropped in his career that haven't been hits. You know, whether we I love Murder Inc. I love Ja, but Ja is not in my top five. He's like. When top we talk, 10. When we top talk 10. about cultural impact, that's why I put Ja in, because Ja paved the way for so many of these artists. So, so where 50 at then? Is 50 on any of your list? 50 not on my list. I will say he's got one of the, the greatest debut albums. I'll give him that. Um, I'll say that album's a classic. But I, I'd still... My problem with 50 is he's never been able to emulate what he did on that first album. And True. every album since then has con has been worse, right? Like even even if you look at what he's done with G Unit, right? Like those mixtapes, fire. But then those G Unit albums was like, what did what? Are we? And they were of the moment. We still rocked them. They still had some great singles. But that's that's why, like you, because he put out so much in that time, there just wasn't enough for me to be like, okay. We got we got legend. Yeah, and I can agree with that statement about Fifty. I definitely feel like um, his first album was his best album, and yeah, the albums after definitely did um, kind of go down. Um, but on tour, he's great. <laughs> Let me just say, I believe it. Beyonce, you know, Beyonce, watch out because he do as many stage. I mean, um, wardrobe changes as she does. So, and he got the choreo. He got, you know, what's this guy named? Um, Uncle Murda and Tony Ayo, the choreo. Yeah. So, go fit. I <laughs> go fit. I believe it. I believe it. But this, I mean, that's the thing with hip hop. There's so many we can acknowledge. Um, but anyway, let's jump into this parlay with Penny segment. I know we, basically you're going to continue the conversation with just the women in, in hip hop. So, yeah, I mean, I always love talking about female rap. Um, not gonna keep it too long, just because I feel like it's kind of evident that we can see where the power has been shifting. It's either you vibe with Nikki or you vibe with Cardi, and I feel like even if if you are a female rapper that's of real relevance, you have to pick a side. If you're not of that much relevance and you kind of independent, you kind of do your own thing, yada yada yada. You can just be neutral. You don't have to vibe with none of them. You don't have to pick a side. But when you look at sexy. Like sexy, she don't really, she don't really bang with um with um Cardi, and it's no beef. It's just you know once Nikki kind of gets you under your wing, under her wing, it's like you know don't mess with her, don't mess with her. Or you feel like if you do that, it might be issues with Nikki. And who really want issues with Nikki as a new artist coming out, getting shine? Like not many people want to you know deal with that. Same thing like Glow don't really mess with Nikki because her affinity is with Cardi. I feel like now you kind of just have, and it ain't no beef. I'm not trying to say that it's no beef. It's just you can see where the attention is going to and things like that. And, you know, my problem with, I feel like hip hop in general is just the fact that there's not, there hasn't been too many times where the torch has been successfully passed down. It's normally snatched. And that's with men, that's with the men, and that's with the women. And I feel like that's a problem because if we, and then also it kind of impacts like how we will look at these legends because if the legends are passing down the torch, like I feel like, I feel like it's people like LL that, you know, have done things like that. Like, you know, like he has passed down a torch in a lot of ways and not, and not like in a way where, um, it's a ceremony and, you know, it's like, but in a way where like giving his full support, you know, kind of like just doing his own thing, not really getting involved and stuff, you know, just supporting like, you know, those, the guys, which was the Jay-Z's and, you know, 
that came after. I feel like we definitely don't have that in female rap. And, you know, the thing with it, with Nikki, is that Kim was trying to do that. Like, the torture is literally snatched from Kim. And I'll kind of never forgive the industry because I feel like a lot of the times the industry turns a blind eye to stuff. And that's a problem. Like, during the time when Nikki was doing all of this and it was all of this thing, like, this hard, like, Jack and Nikki, I mean, Car um, Kim Swag. And when I say swag, I'm really talking aesthetically. Some lyrics as well, too. Because if you really get into a lot of Nikki early mixtapes and some of the same, she was doing some of the same things Kim was doing. Having a Nigerian bootleg on her mixtapes, on her intros, like, Kim was doing that. So, yeah, you know, Nikki has blossomed into this artist that is completely different from Kim. That's fine. But when she came out, she was jacking the aesthetic and some of the lyrics. Now, not the songs, because, yes, they're two different artists. Nikki, she, Nikki has definitely paid her dues to where now you can look at what she's done and you can assess it properly. But at the time, there wasn't enough people holding Kim up and letting it be known that this shit ain't right. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it, people that work in the industry at the time. Like, it wasn't, pe like, people like Angie Martinez. People that was in position, like, whether it was with interviews and things like that, that just allowed that to, allowed that, allowed the media to just paint that narrative. You know, and that's, that, I'll never forgive them for that. Like, I'll just never forgive them for that because I feel like, you know, um, when it came to Kim, you know, people just turned their eye. I feel like people turned their eye. They wasn't, nobody was, how do I put it? Nobody was pointing out like, nah, you got to be original. What you're doing is not original. Like nobody was point. like nobody was pointing that out. And I just think that that was corny. So, you know, but Kim was trying to pass the torch. That's the thing about it. Kim was trying to pass the torch to Nikki in the cash money situation and everything. And, you know, Nikki wanted to snatch it from her. I feel like Nikki had the opportunity to share the torch with Cardi. She didn't want to do that. That's fine. It just made her look bitter because, honestly, that Queen album by Nikki is a great album. And I'm not even a super Nikki fan. But the Queen album that she dropped was a really great album. And, honestly... It could have got more recognition if she didn't rush to drop it during the same time Cardi dropped her debut album. She dropped it the same year, and she dropped it at the end of the year, which was probably the worst thing to do. Thinking you're going to get nominated for some Grammys, you still didn't. You know, you didn't win one. So I just feel like, you know, we need to start passing down a torch rather than just snatching it from people because now you snatched it from Cardi and you still got to share with her. Because again, like I just said, it's either they vibing with you or they vibing with Cardi. So, you know, why not just pass it down, share it so that the love could be all mutual. So that's just how I feel when it comes to like the power, you know. And then some people like Sexy Red just come in and just highlight themselves. You know what I mean? Like they ain't really trying to even be recognized as the best or Grammys. You know, they just moving the culture. They just cre They just working. You know what I mean? So it's like you can't do nothing but whether you like the content or not, you can't do nothing but respect it because you see the work ethic. So that's how I feel about this whole power thing. The power is really just cut between these two ladies. It's cut between Nikki and it's cut between Cardi for right now until somebody comes and snatches it. I think it's so hard because in order for the torch to be passed, you have to be in a position to pass it. Right. And, you know, you even just said it with Buster, right? Like he, that is why he puts a, a Coil Ray in a video on his project. There was also Kodak Black Blast on that album. Um, so many others, right? He, when an older artist does that and attempts to like, like literally on one of the songs, he is paying homage. The song is called Homage. And it's him talking to Kodak and talking about how, you know, I saw you do some crazy things. You got arrested, but now you finally on this positive track. So I got to pay homage while Kodak was also paying homage to him. You do that and people are like, why, man, why, why are you doing a song with Kodak? Like when that's probably the perfect collab, right? Like you're talking about an animated young dude 
I'm an OG who's pretty animated. Like, this is perfect. Same with the song with the baby, right? Like, it's Busted the Baby and um, T Pain. Perfect collaboration. I thought that song would have blew up. But again, like, a lot of what happens is because I love Buster and I'm not really a fan of the baby, like, I can't, I can't like this song. So I'm just going to throw the whole song away because, you know. Yeah. So I think that's what happens with a lot of these songs. And when we look at, you know, Nikki and Kim in the beginning, like, it was a lot of that. Like, they did have that song on Cash Money, but it became issues just around the song. It also didn't help that Kim went to prison, right? So that's what I mean in terms of being in a position to pass the torch. Kim went to prison for that year. It threw everything off. Kim, even but though that album is, she dropped, The Naked Truth was probably one of her... Her best album. And so my thing is like, say. even though Lighters is probably one of the biggest songs of her career, and that album was an amazing album for her. The problem was, if you can't tour this album, if you can't really promote this album, you can't do anything besides put out this Lighters Up video. She left the lane wide open for female rap at that time. She and did. She did. Foxy and that's fine. With, Foxy was dealing with, um, you know. Foxy was going deaf at that time. So, you know, she had those issues. I know she kept trying to come back with Rockefeller. Jay's just, we're not going to get to Jay-Z being a bad executive. But, um, you know, so that lane was left open. So there wasn't really even time to pass the torch. Nikki kind of had to come in and grab it. And unfortunately, like, that that's just how it's been over the years, you know. And it becomes a... For a lot of these artists, it's still, this is what makes me money, right? This is how right. I preserve my legacy. This is how I remain relevant. So someone like Nikki, she's been making music since 2007. Right. Since 2024, like she should be, her run should be up, right? Her, her run has lasted more than most artists. She should be at the point where she's on her MC light, just doing special features and and going to do other things. But if this your main thing, and this is the thing that really brings you the most money, are you trying to give it up? It's like it's like paid in full, right? <laughs> Will the streets still so, love me? Nikki don't have, the thing is, Nikki don't have to give it up. But Nikki did say, you know, she not giving her spot up until she raises her children. She said that on one of her, on right. one of her songs. So I, you know, and she don't have to give it up because Nikki can still produce great music. Like, this last album that she dropped, it was a good album. Best tour, um, you know, the tour's doing numbers, multiple sold out shows, having coming back to different cities. So, you know, Nikki can, you know what it is? The barbs are still growing up. Love. That's the reason why Nikki can still be relevant. And she can even come out with another album and do another tour. I, that's all I see for her is coming out with one more album. Possibly, I don't know when, but I could see her coming out with one more album, doing the tour, and that's just it. Um, I mean, I won't even say that for because in all honesty, Eminem about to drop another album, and that's probably going to be the number one album of the year, right? Like when you got when you are in charge of the spot, and someone doesn't come and snatch it from you, you got to continue that run as long as you can. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And someone like Eminem, listen until Jack Harlow comes and says, "Yo, <laughs> it's it's a wrap." <laughs> Ain't gonna be no Eminem albums. Eminem gonna keep dropping things, man. Every few and Nicki could do see. that because Cardi it's, Cardi has yeah. vibed out of the competition. Exactly. She's not. She's not dropping music, and um, you know, we still want to hear from Cardi. I just think Cardi's <laughs> so hard on herself because you know, I just think she's so hard on herself because she's not an artist like Nicki, and you know, people are going to constantly compare things like that, but. There's a lane for Cardi, and we want to hear Cardi. Like her recent single, the the recent video, the two little songs she did this year, the like what freestyle, the enough song. We want to hear from Cardi. So, but she just told us too. She said she's not dropping an album this year. She's gonna enjoy her summer. So have fun, Cardi. <laughs> and I think this is a good way to to wrap the show up because it it really brings it all full circle. I think Cardi, in a lot of ways, is dealing with what Lauren Hill dealt dealt with. Right, mm -hmm. when you come out and as a rapper, and your debut album does gets a Grammy, 
right? And it does the numbers that it does. And you're able to to have this success. She became an actor and, and so on and so forth. Not not the same trajectory as Lauren, because Lauren already had the acting right. bag. She already had the Fuji's bag. But what it really has done for Cardi is made it so that she is always going to feel like whatever she does next has to top that, which is why it's been, what, 30, almost 30 years, and we still don't have a follow-up Lauren Hill album, right? Almost right. almost 25 years, I think, is, is more right. Almost 25 years, and we don't have a follow-up, right? There's a world where we get the same thing. At least Cardi's putting out music, because no right. one didn't even do that, <laughs> right? Cardi's at least going to test this thing out, see what it is. But in a lot of ways, her, her legacy is already cemented. She already has the power. She already is one of the biggest names in hip hop with just that one and to project. I think she came from Love and Hip Hop. To think, to think that she came from Love and Hip Hop doing her own tours, you know, to think she came from the strip club. And like you said, she got the power. So. That's one thing about it. You never know who going to have the power. It could be the underdog. You just never know. We're going to definitely continue this conversation on the next episode. We're going to dive more into legacies, especially with everything that's going on in hip hop, legacies, power. But, you know, I think we we covered so much today. We'll leave you out with that. Um, Episode five in the books. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Make sure you check us out, Hustlers Anonymous. We're on Instagram. Um, we're on YouTube under Parlay Mag. Check us out and follow us um, personally. I'm on Instagram, Penny Blackwright. So it's B L A C W R I T E S on Instagram. And you can Google me and just find me on all platforms. Um, so yeah, um, you can check out Kevin as well. Um, Parley with me on Instagram, and he's also on uh, Parley Magazine on Instagram, Facebook. So um, ParleyMag.com. Check us out. For sure, for sure. We'll see y'all soon. Yes, we'll see you next time.